Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. I'm smiling but I've got some bad news for you. My Bankman Gordon has broken in quite a bad way. So basically what happened was I was filming a review, I think it was my Bankman Stanley review, and I decided to have Gordon just in one of the sidings. I wasn't even using him, I just decided to have him in one of the sidings during the review. After the review I picked him up to put him away and the front bogey clattered to the ground. I thought, flipping heck, the damn screws come loose. I start looking, rootling around on the floor on my hands and knees, looking for the screw, right? I did not find the screw, and it turns out, if we bring Gordon in, the screw was still fixed to Gordon, and the little metal bar that holds the front bogey has sheared right through. Now, first of all, this really kind of gets on my nerves, if you will, because these models by Backman are incredibly expensive. And I've only had this Gordon for about seven years, so it's not been long. And already we've got metal parts, which realistically should last forever, that are failing. Now, the thing that really bugs me about this is that I'm an adult, right? So I don't play with Gordon in, uh, in the way that a child would play with him. I don't throw him around. He doesn't get a lot of hammer. I use him very infrequently, very occasionally. I look after him, I service him, I keep him clean. And despite that, within seven years, we've got a metal part that's failed. So I don't know whether it's Mazak rot. That's when uh, a metal actually physically rots away because of impurities in the metal, so poor quality metal basically. Uh, I don't know whether it's that, I don't know whether the part is too thin, I mean look at it, it does seem kind of thin to be holding a bogey like this, so we'll have to find out. Now, what I don't want to do is throw Gordon in the bin. You can see, you can imagine the look on his face saying something like that. He's one of my favourite characters, I don't want to waste him just because a crappy little part has broken. But what I also don't want to do is go to Backman's spares department and buy another part because I think, frankly, Backman have had their money for this Gordon. I'm not giving them any more of it. So what I've decided to do is fashion a new part. I've looked at it. I think I can probably make a new one. And I'm going to show you the process so that if any of your Thomas and Friends engines or anything else, for that matter, uh, should fail, you might be able to make new parts for it. So hopefully this will work. Let's take a close look at this. Let's see what's happened. Let's see if I can 3D print a new part and it should be quite easy. Okay, so let's get this part off. Luckily, it's screwed to the bogey and the chassis. So it's a single part which we can really easily replicate, hopefully. So there is the irritating little piece that's broken off and it looks as though it's sheared off exactly where the screw is, uh, which makes sense. That's where the, the metal is the thinnest, I guess. So let's have a look at this thing. So yeah, there you have it. Just too thin. That's not a smart part design, is it? Look how thin that is. And you know this part is gonna get hammer, Backman. Think about who this is for. So yeah, it's just stupid, really, isn't it? Let's be honest. So what I'm gonna do, is in order to replicate this, I'm gonna draw a bit of a, a diagram. So we need to know exactly what dimensions this thing has so that I can duplicate it. So it's literally going to be the two circles, and I'm terrible at drawing, by the way, so <laughs> ignore how bad this is. It's gonna basically be this, right? So we need the dimensions. So the thickness, let's start with the thickness to begin with. Um, and I'm going to use calipers. You can get these calipers on Amazon. Get a good set that goes to two decimal places of accuracy. Uh, that means that you can really get accurate readings out of this. So 1.28 millimeters thickness. So let's call it 1.3. Um, this bar here width wise is 3.6. So let's put that on there, 3.6. Sorry that my writing's upside down for you. Uh, what we also need to do is get the, the di inside diameter of the hole for the screw. That's quite important. And you can use this attachment or this end of the calipers for that. So that is 3.6. So that's the diameter here, 3.6. 
And then what we need to do is the tricky part, it's to find the distance between the centre of this hole and this hole, which is hard to do because one of the holes has broken off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance between the edges of the holes, like this, and that is 20 millimetres exactly. So from there to there, that's what I've measured basically, that is 20 millimetres. And so to get from there to there, we just have to add the diameter of the hole because half of the circle is on this side, the other half is on this side. So it's 20 plus 3.6, that's going to be 23.6 millimetres. And what I also want to do is make this thickness a little bit more than it currently is. So I need to get some idea of how much room I've got to play with. This is another part of the calipers you can use, but I need to know whether I can get sort of 0 0.8 mil of thickness. Yeah, I should be able to. So currently the thickness of the metal there, which is ridiculous, let's find out how thin it is. It's 0 0.9. So actually, I'm thinking about printing this with plastic with FDM. So the parts in an FDM 3D printer, they print in tubes, which are for 0 0.4 millimeters thick. So these circles are going to be made up of one tube of 0.4 millimeter thickness. The next one up would be two. So that's 0 0.4, that's 0 0.4, that'll be 0 0.8. That's why I was talking about 0 0.8. What I might try and do is add another layer, make it three tubes thick, which would be 1.2 millimeters. So <laughs> I've, got, I've got sticky tape on my desk. So this then I'm going to make 1.2 millimeters and we've got to hope that it's going to fit around there. If not, I'll have to reduce them down and make another part that is 0 0.8 instead. Uh, so there we go, I've got all the bits. Let's go into CAD now and let's design this part. So I'm gonna do this in SketchUp and the free online version of SketchUp at that, so anybody can do this. And it should be very, very easy. So first of all, I'm gonna start by creating two circles of the diameter that we measured. And I'm spacing those circles by the length that we measured. Then I'm going to add thickness to these circles, 1.2 millimeters in thickness, that's fine. Then I'm going to create the rod that connects the two circles together. Give all of that some volume, 1.3 millimeters thick. Connect the three parts together and there we have it, that's the part. It is as simple as that. All right, so here goes the 3D printer. This is going to hopefully accurately create the part that I've just designed. And the total time for the print is about one minute. That was the estimate. So this is not something that is going to take very long at all to do. So I'll let this print. And if we are very lucky, we'll have a part that I can use. There we go. That's all it took. All right. So bring this forth. Allow it a second or two to harden, and then I'll use Rusty to try and get it off. Oh, hopefully I can find it again, otherwise I'll be printing another. So it's not an amazing quality print, really I needed it printing closer to the bed so that the bottom layer all sort of sticks together a bit better. But that doesn't matter too much. The beauty about all this is now that I've got the CAD, if I want to make another one or if I'm not happy with it, I can press a button and one minute later I'll have the part. So let's see, did I manage to get the circles the right size? See if this will fit. Um, hmm. Are these the same hole size? I'm wondering whether one end was supposed to have oops, a different sized hole or not. Let's see. So this one is. 3.25 wide and this one is 3.55 ah cack 
So maybe then, maybe it will fit here. Yeah, it fits on that one, but it seems to struggle to fit on here now. What I might be able to do is just make it fit by filing a little bit of material out of there. Otherwise, all I need to do is go into the CAD and just change that dimension. But I think I'll just try and file a bit of material out of there because it's not far off from fitting. How's that? Perfect. All right, well, that's not a problem then. Obviously, you don't want it too tight because you want the bogey to be able to rotate, but it should be able to. Right, tightening down. All right, ooh, so we got the thickness bang on. And unfortunately, I can't make this any thicker because that screw is tight there. Um, and if I made it any thicker, then this wouldn't be able to turn anymore because I'd be screwing down onto it. So let's see if Gordon can accept this new part. This end did fit, yep. Screw. Oh. See if that can still rotate. Yeah, it can. All right. Well, that seems to be in the right place, doesn't it? Look at that. So, I think we might be back in business. But let's see. Let's put him on the track. Is this going to be strong enough? It's not going to be as strong as the metal part, although the metal part wasn't particularly strong because that just broke. So, hopefully, this is going to be better. And if it does break again, well, one minute later, I can have another part. So, yeah, let's get him onto the track. Let's see if that's done the trick. Right, let's get all these wheels on then. Make sure this is all tickety boot. I think it will be. Here we are. Again, bogey seems to be in about the right place, doesn't it? Seems to be moving all right. Driving wheels are still on the track. That's a good thing. Right, let's send him off around the track then, see how he deals with curves and things. Okay, various track curves coming up. Ah not a problem so i think that's job done and this was so easy i think if i wasn't faffing around with the camera filming this it would have been job done in 10 minutes so this doesn't take long and of course practicing making basic parts like this is really useful if you want to develop your 3d cad skills or whatever parts like this don't take long they're not too frustrating they allow you to experiment a bit they're not too overwhelming, so they are great practice. This is the kind of part I started out making when I started 3D printing, and you know I can obviously create full-blown models now. So yeah, job done. Gordon's happy, I'm happy. I've not had to throw him away. I've not had to send off for spare parts, which I've got to pay for. This took 10 minutes, and now if it breaks again, or if anybody else needs one, it's very, very easy. And if you want, I'll pop a link to the file in the description, just in case you need one of these particular parts. And then you can just 3D print it and be ready to go. So thanks very much for watching, folks. Good luck with any repairs you decide to do. There's all sorts of parts you can make yourself at home, which is fantastic. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.